George Washington, the first president, was indeed the first president to die. He likely died of epiglottitis, which is the inflammation of the epiglottis, or, or that little flap thingy at the base of the tongue that prevents food from getting into your windpipe. The doctors who treated him didn't quite know what it was, though, and just tried bloodletting. He ended up losing around 40% of his blood before he died. He was 67, and his last words were, "'Tis well." Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. The second president to die was Thomas Jefferson and the third U.S. president, John Adams. And, crazy thing, they both died on the exact same day, which was July 4, 1826, which was the 50th anniversary of the country. The two had a close friendship that went back to when they both led in the Continental Congress during the American Revolution. That said, later on, they were bitter political rivals for a while. In their later years, they once again became besties and wrote to each other regularly. Jefferson apparently had a slow, painful death and was bedridden for his final months. What officially caused his death were really bad infections in his bloodstream. Apparently he had urine in his blood related to having severe kidney damage. On top of that, he had pneumonia. His last words were, no doctor, nothing more, although before that he had supposedly said, this is the fourth. John Adams apparently died of heart failure, and his death was more sudden than Jefferson's. Unaware that Jefferson had died just hours before him, his last words included, Thomas Jefferson survives. Jefferson was 83, and Adams was 90. James Monroe, the fourth president to die, also died on July 4th, died from tuberculosis and heart failure exactly in 1831, five years after Jefferson and Adams. He was 73. His last words referred to his good friend James Madison, the fourth president. They supposedly were, I regret that I should leave this world without again beholding him. There's no solid evidence he ever said that, though. James Madison. Madison was the next president to die, dying almost five years after Monroe, on June 28, 1836. He almost died on July 4th, too, and his doctors actually tried to get him to take stimulants to prolong his life until then. Anyway, he also died of heart failure. He was 85. Before he died, one of his nieces asked him what was wrong. He supposedly replied, Nothing more than a change of mind, my dear. I always talk better lying down. So yeah, those were his last words. William Henry Harrison William Henry Harrison, the sixth president to die, was the first to die in office just a month into his presidency. He was 68. It's a common misconception that he caught a cold that turned into pneumonia after giving a really long speech at his inauguration and refusing to wear a jacket in chilly weather. Well, he did give a two-hour speech at his inauguration, and he did not wear a jacket on a chilly day. However, he didn't get sick until more than three weeks later. And yes, the official cause of his death was pneumonia. However, 173 years later, Experts argued that he actually caught typhoid from bacteria in the water supply. His last words were, Sir, I wish you to understand the true principles of the government. I wish them carried out. I ask nothing more. Andrew Jackson Andrew Jackson was the next president to die. He had survived so much crazy stuff his entire life, but ultimately his heart failed him on June 8, 1845. He was 78. At the time of his death, he also suffered from edema, which is the buildup of fluid in the body's tissue. On his deathbed, after reacting to his family crying around him, his last words were, What is the matter with my dear children? Have I alarmed you? Oh, do not cry. Be good children, and we will all meet in heaven. John Quincy Adams Three years later, in 1848, the sixth president, John Quincy Adams, died from a stroke at the age of 80. He had worked in Congress up until his death, and his last words were, This is the last of earth. I am content. Future President Abraham Lincoln was there when he died. James Polk. James Polk died far too young. He was only 53 in 1849 when he died from cholera, likely from drinking contaminated water. He died just over three months after he left office. It was crazy to see how quickly his health deteriorated, because as president, he was energetic and passionate. He died with his wife, Sarah, at his side, and his last words were, I love you, Sarah, for all eternity. I love you. Zachary Taylor. Zachary Taylor was the second president to die while in office, less than a year and a half after swearing in 1850. 
He died from gastroenteritis, or inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract. Americans call it the stomach flu for some reason. It must have been painful for him. It's worth noting that there were theories that he may have been poisoned, but analysis of his remains in 1991 could find no proof of that. Still, some historians think it's a possibility. Taylor's last words were, I am about to die. I expect the summons very soon. I have tried to discharge all my duties faithfully. I regret nothing, but I am sorry that I am about to leave my friends. John Tyler and Martin Van Buren. Two former presidents died in 1862 at the height of the American Civil War. First, the 10th president, John Tyler, in January, and later the 8th president, Martin Van Buren, in July. Tyler died from a stroke. He was 71. Shortly before he died, he took a sip of brandy and told his doctor, I am going. The doctor replied, I hope not, sir. Tyler then responded, perhaps it is best. Those were his last words. He's the only president to be buried with a Confederate flag instead of an American flag, by the way. Van Buren died from heart failure brought on by bronchial asthma. He was 79 and had lived to see eight more presidents succeed him in the office after he left it. That's still the record, although if Jimmy Carter sticks around a few more years, supposedly his last words were, there is but one reliance. Abraham Lincoln. The next president to die was the first assassinated in office. In 1865, when Abraham Lincoln and his wife and friends were watching a show at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C., John Wilkes Booth came up behind Lincoln, who was laughing hysterically in reaction to the show, and shot him in the head at point-blank range. After going into a coma for eight hours, Lincoln died the next morning. He was 56. We don't know his last words for sure, but one account says they were, she won't think anything about it. That was a response to Mary, Lincoln's wife, after she asked him what Miss Harris, one of their friends sitting next to them, would think of her hanging on to him so much. James Buchanan. In 1868, three years later after Lincoln's death, James Buchanan died from both respiratory failure and rheumatic gout. He was 77. Some say his last words were, Oh, Lord God Almighty, as thou wilt. But honestly, we are not that convinced they were. Seems a little too dramatic for us. Franklin Pierce. Franklin Pierce died in 1869, the next year from inflammation of the stomach. He had been suffering from liver cirrhosis for several years, yet had drunk alcohol heavily anyway. So yeah, basically, alcohol killed him. He died alone, with no family members present, and that's why we don't know his last words. We do know he was 64 when he died. Millard Fillmore. Millard Fillmore died in 1874. He died from a stroke at the age of 74. His last words supposedly were, the nourishment is palatable, referring to a bowl of soup he had just finished. Even though we doubt these were his last words, it's fun to pretend they were. Andrew Johnson. In 1875, Andrew Johnson also died from a stroke. He was 66 and was still an active U.S. Senator representing Tennessee at the time. Also at the time, he was the only surviving past president. Uh, yeah, few can agree about what his last words were, so we are not going to speculate on this one. James Garfield. James Garfield was the second president to be assassinated while in office in 1881. However, if he had competent doctors, perhaps he would have survived. Just four months into his presidency, a mentally ill fellow named Charles Guiteau came up to Garfield and shot him twice, once in the back and once in the arm. My God, what is this? Garfield shouted afterward, but those would not be his last words. Most people don't know that after he was shot, Garfield was slowly starting to recover before his doctors screwed things up. While trying to get his bullet out with unsterilized fingers and tools, they caused a severe infection. Two months after getting shot, Garfield died from septic shock. His last words were to his friend, General David Swaim. Clutching the tremendous pain in his chest, he said, Oh, Swaim, can't you stop this? Oh, oh, Swaim. It must have been a painful death indeed. He was just 49. Ulysses Grant. Ulysses Grant also had a slow, painful death. At the age of 63 in 1885, he died from throat cancer after suffering from it for at least a year. His last words, or a uh, word, was water. Chester Arthur. The next year after the death of President Ulysses Grant in 1886, Chester Arthur died from a stroke at the age of 57. We don't know his last words. 
Hertford Hayes. In 1893, after suffering from a heart attack, he died from heart disease at the age of 70. His last words were, I know that I'm going where Lucy is. By the way, Lucy was his beloved wife. Now where was she? Well, frankly, we think she was in the bathroom. Wait, what's that? Oh, heaven. Hayes thought she went to heaven, so he was going there too. Benjamin Harrison. Benjamin Harrison was next. He got influenza, which then turned into pneumonia. He died from it at the age of 67 in 1901. Now his last words make sense to us. They were, are the doctors here? Doctor, my lungs. Yeah, pneumonia sucks. William McKinley. The third president was assassinated while in office in 1901. That'd be William McKinley. After serving as president for four and a half years, a zealot named Leon Chalgos shot him twice in the stomach. Chalgos thought McKinley was a symbol of oppression and government bad and stuff. McKinley appeared to be recovering in the days following the shooting, but then took a turn for the worse. He ended up dying from gangrene, a severe type of tissue death caused by a lack of blood supply. Do me a favor and don't Google pictures of it. You just did, didn't you? Anyway, his last words were, We are all going. We are all going. God's will be done, not ours. He was responding to his wife Ida, who had said, I want to go too. Grover Cleveland Seven years later, in 1908, Grover Cleveland, the 22nd and 24th president, was the 24th president to pass away. He suffered from a heart attack and died at the age of 71. He had had ongoing health problems, suffering from coronary sclerosis and intestinal obstruction. His last words were, I have tried so hard to do right. Me too, Grover. Me too. Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt's death was a bit of a shocker, to be honest. On the night of January 5, 1919, he had been struggling to breathe. He saw his doctor, who gave him some kind of treatment, and after that, Roosevelt felt better and then went to bed. However, he never woke up. He died in his sleep, which is why his last words were, please put out that light, James, which he had spoken to his family servant, James Amos, before he drifted off. The vice president at the time, Thomas Marshall, famously said, death had to take Roosevelt sleeping, for if he had been awake, there would have been a fight. It's assumed he died from a coronary occlusion caused by a blood clot. He was just 60. Warren Harding. Warren Harding was the sixth president to die in office, but third to die in office of natural causes. When he was traveling along the West Coast, he suddenly experienced severe stomach and chest pains. After some rest, he began to recover and traveled down to San Francisco, but down there he began to feel like crap again and became bedridden at the Palace Hotel. On August 2, 1923, his wife Florence was reading a flattering article about him from the Saturday Evening Post. After she paused, he told her, that's good, go on, read some more. Those were his last words, as he had a dramatic heart attack right afterward. He died at the age of 57, just less than two and a half years into his presidency. Woodrow Wilson died just a few months after Harding of a stroke in 1924, although he had already suffered from a severe stroke a few years before when he was president that nearly killed him then. In fact, afterward, he was partially paralyzed and nearly blind because of it. Supposedly, his last words were, When the machinery is broken, I am ready. He was 67. Today, he's the only president buried within Washington, D.C. William Taft. Taft is known as the heaviest president in American history, but in his final years, he made a significant effort to get in shape, exercising regularly and eating healthier foods to lose around 100 pounds. He also worked right up until right before he died as Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. However, his health had declined beginning in the late 1920s. He died of inflammation of the liver and heart disease when he was 72 in 1930. We don't know his last words. Calvin Coolidge Calvin Coolidge died of a heart attack at the age of 60 in 1933. His death was sudden and unexpected. Apparently his last words were, good morning, Robert. Robert was a carpenter who had been working on his house. Franklin Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt was the seventh president to die in office in 1945. When he died at the age of 63, supposedly from a stroke, he had been in office for more than 12 years. Now we say supposedly, since some historians argue the real cause was melanoma, a type of skin cancer. 
His last words apparently were, I have a terrific headache. John F. Kennedy, the most recent president to die in office and fourth assassinated. His death is arguably the most famous death of all the presidents, and right now you can search online and see footage of it. He died from gunshot wounds, and it was dramatic, in front of what seemed like the entire world as he paraded through Dealey Plaza in Dallas, Texas, on November 22, 1963. Now, we're not going to get into all the theories about who really killed Kennedy, but according to the Warren Commission and most historians, undoubtedly the main dude responsible was Lee Harvey Oswald, who was murdered himself just three days later. Public opinion polls have demonstrated that most Americans still don't believe the official version tells the whole truth about what really went down with Kennedy's death. His last words were, no, you certainly can't. He was responding to Nellie Connolly, the wife of then Texas Governor John Connolly. She had said before that, you certainly can't say that the people of Dallas haven't given you a nice welcome, Mr. President. In 1963, at just 46, John F. Kennedy was the youngest president to die in American history. Herbert Hoover. Herbert Hoover died in 1964. He had gone through several health problems the last couple years of his life, but the official cause of his death was massive internal bleeding. We don't know his last words, but he did live to the old age of 90. A pretty good run there, Hoover. Dwight D. Eisenhower. The Grim Reaper's next visit was to Dwight D. Eisenhower's house. He died from heart failure at the age of 78 in 1969. He had had heart problems for a while and famously suffered from a heart attack while he was president. His last words were supposedly, I want to go. God take me. Harry Truman was the next president to die in 1972. His organs had failed and his blood pressure went extremely low after suffering from severe pneumonia. He was 88. We don't know his last words. Lyndon Johnson died in 1972, less than a month after Truman, despite not first serving as president until 10 years after Truman left office. LBJ, who smoked heavily for much of his adult life, died from a heart attack at the age of 64. His last words were, send Mike immediately. Mike was his secret service agent who was assigned to his Texas ranch. By the time Mike arrived, Johnson was already dead. Richard Nixon. The next president wouldn't die until more than 21 years later. That would be Richard Nixon, who died from a stroke at the age of 81 in 1994. His last word makes a lot of sense. It was help. Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was the next president to die, dying from pneumonia after long struggling with Alzheimer's disease, which he was first diagnosed with in 1994. As horrible as Alzheimer's disease is, remember Reagan nearly became the fifth president assassinated while in office, but survived a gunshot wound back in 1981. We don't know Roe Reagan's last words, but he was 93 in 2004. Gerald Ford. Two years later after the death of Ronald Reagan, in 2006, Gerald Ford died officially of arteriosclerotic cerebrovascular disease and diffuse arteriosclerosis. Okay, look, he had heart issues, okay? He was also 93, and we also don't know his last words. And finally, the most recent president to die was George H.W. Bush, who died of Parkinson's disease on November 30, 2018. He was 94, at the time the longest-lived American president, but that distinction is now held by Jimmy Carter. Bush's son, George W. Bush, who himself was president, reported that his dad's last words were, I love you too.